Hey guys, um, today we're going to be going through collisions using Nape. And I'm going to be using Starling, but you could very easily convert this to um, the native flash display list if you wanted to. It's not too hard. Um, so, we're going to go to the main class, and I'm going to firstly show you what we're going to end up with. Um, it's going to look a bit like this. And all it is, is um, a few bodies are being randomly spawned, and as soon as they hit the ground, a um, collision will be um, detected, and we will remove the body from the screen as soon as it hits the floor. Alright, so you can do a lot of things with this, and um, it's a very useful feature in Nape, and it's one of the um, core mechanics of Nape that actually make it work. Um, so let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna set my stage scale mode to no scale, and my stage line to top left. I'm gonna set a frame rate to 60, and I'm gonna make a new styling instance. And it's gonna be this class here. And uh, all that's in the previous tutorial, that's why I didn't go through it in, um, in detail. So, we're going to make a space variable, we're going to make a, another bitmap debug variable, and we've got two new types here, and this is a CB type. And what this means is it's a collision callback type, or um, callback type. And this is basically attached to the bodies to tell the body what kind of collision it has, or to identify the collision callback of that body. Um, and a callback is basically a function that's called under certain circumstances, so when a collision is cl um, collision is detected, a callback will be called, and we'll handle it for a callback. And then we're going to have a variable called floor, which is going to be our main floor body, and it's going to be a type body. We're going to have the screen width and screen height in different variables, which are integers. Uh, in our main function, we're going to add um, the space and debug, um, then we're going to add the floor, and then we're going to add the event listener for end of frame, which means it'll run um, the on update function 60 times per second because we set our frame rate to 60, um, or at least it'll try to do its hardest. So, in our add space and debug, all we do is we make um, the callback types, we initialize them, so we make the ball CB type equal to a new CB type, and same with the floor CB type. Um, we make a gravity variable, which is a vector2, which is a weak vector2, and I didn't actually explain what this vector2.weak does. Um, the vector2.weak vector um, uses a sort of pool of um, vector2s, and when you finish with it, it will um, reuse the vector if it's needed. Or if you wanted to, you could dispose the vector, and that will uh, get it out of the pool. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize the space using that gravity, and um, in the previous tutorial, I also used 500 to um, because it's a nice value and it actually worked for me. Um, and here's where a strange line of code that you're probably not familiar with uh, is introduced. And in my space, we have a property called listeners, and that list that listeners will be all of the collision callbacks, all of the um, different types of callbacks that will be used in your space. So collisions, um, fluid collisions, etc, etc. And we're going to add a new listener. And uh, this listener is of type new interaction listener. And inside the interaction listener you need to define a variety of parameters. And these are the parameters it expects. It expects a CB event, which is a callback event, um, which is what event must happen for the actual callback to be um, executed. Uh, it contains an interaction type, which is the type of collision that must happen, or the type of action or interaction that must occur for the callback to happen. Um, and then we've got the options 1 and options 2, and as you can see, um, it, that's any value, but we're going to pass in a interactor, or yeah, we're going to pass in an interactor, and we're going to pass in 2, we're going to pass in the floor, and we're going to pass in the ball CB types. Um, as you can see, um, argument 1, or object 1, option 1 is the floor CB type, and option 2 is the ball type. So, number 1 is the floor, and number 2 is the ball. And if we go down to here, you'll see that I've made the floor um, the interaction number 1, and the ball will be interaction number 2, because that's the way we defined it in here. Um, and then, the last parameter is a function. and well, the last parameter we're entering is going to be a function, and this is going to be the function that is actually called when collision has occurred, or when the beginning of the collision has occurred. Um, 
to change when the callback is actually executed, you can change um, the CB event type. Um, if you change it to end, um, the function will be ran when the collision is finished. Change it to begin, um, the function will be called executed when um, the collision has just began. Um, and you have a different varieties of ones, such as um, sleep, when the object goes to sleep, uh, wake, when the object is awoken, uh, ongoing, when the object is, you know, carrying, um, when it's a continuous collision and it's not actually, like, broken or began or ended. Uh, so we're just going to set it to begin because we want it to be removed as soon as it hits the floor. Um, we want a collision interaction type, but there's different ones like fluid. Uh, yeah, you can get collision, fluid, and sensor interaction types, but um, we're only interested in collision for the moment. Uh, and as I've explained, these three parameters extra ones here. So you add this to the listener's property of my space, and then the function on collision will be called whenever. Um, whenever the two um, CB types um, register and collide. And you can see that we passed in CB types here, we didn't pass in the floor and um, the ball. And the reason is, we, we can have many balls um, with the um, ball CB type, but we couldn't obviously pass in all the balls into this um, listener, and it would be really bad if we had to add listeners for each ball. Um, because that would be really inefficient. So each time we make a new ball, we'll just um, set the CB type of that ball to ball CB type, and then when we make a floor, we'll set the CB type of the floor to that. So that means when any floor would collide with any ball, then that will be um, called. Uh, we set the screen width and screen height. Uh, we make a new debug bitmap, um, and we add it to the native overlay. But if you were doing this in the actual normal flash in the native playlist, all you'd have to do is call this. Uh, add child and it should work on from there. Um, uh, when we add the floor, we make a new body, we add a polygon, um, we add a rectangle to the bottom of the screen, uh, and as you can see here, we add um, we we do floor.cb types to add, and this assigns the floor CB type to um, the actual floor itself. So this body will be affected or essentially passed through to the function callback uh, on collision. Uh, this will be passed through and then we can mess around with this floor. Um, and we assign the space of the floor to my space obviously. And on the update function we call um, we clear the debug and what I've done is I've done if math.random which is um, a random value between 0 and 1 if that's more than 0 0.95 which happens quite often because we are running at 60 frames per second which means like in 10 seconds there would be 600 loops and the chances of um, a value of 0 0.95 coming up in 600 times is quite high um, we call the add ball and the, um, the add ball down here uh, it basically makes a new ball which is a dynamic body uh, it moves with gravity, etc, etc. Um, it will add a new circle with a 30 radius, so in total it will be 60 width, 60 height. Um, the position, I set that randomly across the screen width, and it's at 100 on the y-axis. Uh, we assign the ball CB type to the ball CB types. We do ball .cb types to add ball CB type. Um, we assign the ball space to our space that we made. And um, after we um, add the ball, we step through the space. Uh, we increase the time and space. Um, by 1 over 60, which is our frame rate, uh, so we'll do that once every, um, no, we'll do it 60 times every second. Um, then we draw the debug, then we draw to the debug, um, and then we flush it out or we project what the debug image is to the user. And now I'm going to go through this on collision function, which is very easy, but um, I didn't explain it before because it, um, it's a bit different to most functions. Um, as you can see, uh, we're passing in an interaction callback and uh, Whenever you make a callback for a um, interaction listener, uh, it will pass. Uh, it will pass through an interaction callback. So you must have this in. And uh, um, we're going to get the floor and the ball, and then we're just going to remove the ball from the actual space. So that's um, what happens as soon as as soon as um, the ball and the floor collide. This will be fired off. It will find the floor. It will fly. It will find the body, and it will just remove the body. Uh, I mean, it will remove the ball. Um, so we assign a new variable called floor um, to evt.int1 as body. Now it might look a bit weird, but evt is this interaction callback here. 
and this interaction callback contains data about the collision that's just occurred. So if we type int1, uh, you'll see it returns an interactor, and a body is actually an interactor. So you can cast out, you can cast int1 as a body, and it will understand what you mean. So we're going to get the interactor, and we're going to pass it out as a body, so we can actually get the floor which um, which has actually been collided with and we use um, interactor2 as the body as um, body for the ball and then after we've got these two and again I'll explain why um, I know it's int1 and int2 the reason I know it's int1 and int2 is because option1 and option2 was floor and ball cb type and int1 and int2 are floor and ball um, and then we remove the bodies um, remove the ball from the bodies of our space so to do this you call myspace.bodies.remove and then you put the ball in as a parameter and for example if we can't really do much more than that to be honest so I'm not going to but um, you could just make the balls bounce higher for example so if I wanted the ball just to do a massive bounce uh, I could just do ball.apply impulse um, get a new vector uh, I'll set it screw that um, and let's say I just did that. Screw it. Right, uh, well, I'll do that. Um, this means when the ball is actually hit, it should apply quite a big impulse to the ball, and each ball that hits should fly upwards because it just like bounces the actual floor. Um, oh god, that didn't work, did it? Oh, that wasn't good. Um, hmm. Oops, my bad. Um, it's a minus 800 because we're going in the other direction. My bad, I'm sorry. So now it should bounce upwards um, quite high in comparison. Oh, there you go. It bounces up a bit higher than normal, so... Uh, it doesn't look that obvious, so I'm going to change this, say, to, I don't know, uh, 1,900, okay? And now you'll see that you can you can virtually do anything with these collision callbacks. These collision callbacks are very helpful when you're designing something in NAPE or developing something in NAPE. Um, it's it's interesting to use. Uh, you, the possibilities of this collision callback are pretty much endless. You can do anything you want with it. Um, so yeah, um, I suggest that you mess around with it, and you. I would set challenges, but to be honest, there's not much I can actually set a challenge for. Um, all I can say is be creative and see what you can do with it. Um, I'm sorry for um, not doing tutorials recently much, but um, I'm going to start doing them a lot more. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you've learned quite a bit here. And I will be doing more tutorials in the near future, so look out for them. Thank you. Goodbye.